writing, you'll see punctuation to signal pauses. Use those same commas, periods, question marks, and other punctuation to help you know where to pause when you're speaking. Longer sentences may be split into groups and we may even pause in additional places to communicate what's most important. And you'll find that English speech is typically broken into chunks of four to seven words followed by a pause. Now sometimes you'll find pausing more frequently or less frequently as well. Now thought groups are these groupings of words and you'll notice that it varies from speaker to speaker how often they pause and where they group their words. There aren't always specific rules for exactly where to pause, but you will get a feel for it with observation and practice now that you're aware that it exists. Now the function of these word grouping and pauses is to draw the listener's attention to what is most important in our speech. So it is just as important as the words we use, how we're grouping them and where we're pausing. Now I'd like to take a look at some famous quotes, paying close attention to where the pauses fall. Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you will be successful. In this quote, you'll see that the pauses may be obvious. You'll note that there are periods and commas that tell us where to automatically pause with our voice. But there also may be additional pauses when the speaker wants to emphasize something important. Now I want you to take a look at two different ways we can choose to pause in this quote. Success is not the key to happiness, pause, where you see the red slash mark is where a pause will fall. Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you will be successful. All right, and then option two. You'll notice we have an additional pause after the first word. Success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, you will be successful. All right, let's take a look at another one. How might we pause here? Happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. That's one version. Another native speaker may pause like this. Happiness is when what you think, what you say, and what you do are in harmony. You'll notice the second one has an additional pause after the first word happiness because I really want to focus on the concept of happiness. Now that you're getting a feel for pausing, I want you to try saying out loud some famous quotes. But before you do, take a moment to analyze the quote first. Where do you think you're going to pause? Make sure to say it out loud so you can get a good feel for it. And once you've done that, I'll go ahead and give you a couple of versions of where I would pause. All right, version one, I would pause right in the middle. Even death is not to be feared by one who has lived wisely. Another possibility we might pause right after the second word, death. Even death is not to be feared by one who has lived wisely. So how did you do? Were you able to correctly decide where to pause in this quote? All right, let's try it again with another quote. Decide where you would like to pause in this quote. After you've thought about it for about 15 seconds, I'll go ahead and I'll give you two answers. The first one, again, we might just pause right in the middle. 
It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. And another possible way to pause, we would pause twice. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop.